Hello, and welcome to the fifth round of the Newcom Touring Car Championship for the round of Great Britain here at the famed Silverstone International Circuit. The front row has been locked out by Yuki Tamura and Renault Hirose for Newcom Motors, although Vincenzo Focasado broke up the 1 2 3 start uh, for Newcom Motors, with him starting in third. Hey Takahashi will be starting in fourth. Of course, Hunter Fislowski and Tatian Rosales have been both been given five crew penalties for their antics last weekend for the round of Spain. Of course, we have a first major news item to cover is the instability within Baxter Motorsports. Team owner Richard Baxter is currently under federal investigation for money laundering in the United States. This was an ill-fated attempt for his 2020 presidential campaign where he was seeking re-election as U.S. President. Richard Baxter nor his media uh, wanted to comment on the matter. The fates of Hudson Williams and Donovan Cage are presently unknown. 21 laps will contest the 125km feature. This racetrack is very tough to overtake on. It's very tough to have a lot of consistency on. Tyra has been the main story of the issue here for this weekend, and many drivers have had offset Magus and Beckett's especially uh, towards Priory and Luffield, which is why there are runoffs to mitigate this issue for first causing accidents when re-entering the track. Nevertheless, it's shown really good racing here in the past, and we suspect to find it the same here today. So then, let's get down to the grid. Here we go, now Yuki Tamura is going to take the green flag for the round of Great Britain. Great start for Tamura, terrible start for Hirose and Focusado, we're three wide for secondary in turn one, and it's absolute pandemonium entering cups. A contact in the back that looks like that was Van Dalen, back there nearly losing it. And once I take a look again at the uh, initial race start, it looks like Kei Takahashi may have tried to force a four wide entering turn one, which is ill-advised. Uh, especially on the start of a feature race, but that's what forced uh, Hirose to run Focusado, of course, and there's no investigation on that incident as well, and, well, that's a cry for attention, uh, if you're Scuderia Grasso Culo, um, of course, that wasn't Focusado complaining, that was his race engineer complaining uh, to the stewards, and that was, uh, that would be highlighted in bold, uh, if you're referring to the stewards. Meanwhile, Hirose losing spot after spot now to her teammate, uh, Kei Takahashi, now down another spot to Fabio Vitabasa, maybe, perhaps, no. A tumultuous start for the Drivers' Champion, this is not what she needs if she wants to claw her way back into this Drivers' Championship fight. It is going to be an uphill battle for these next 10 races there for Rena Hirose, but for the time being, she's trying to fend off teammate Kei Takahashi, who's having a pretty splendid rookie campaign uh, in so far. As now we head into Abbey, into the farm straight under bridge now. Hirose might be able to take a run at the outside. Almost, oh, she does touch the grass. Surprisingly, held it together uh, into Priory, but a great start for Hirose nevertheless. Now it's Focusado that we saw just earlier uh, run off course, and now he's down all the way into 10th place from third. So this is as tumultuous of a start for uh, the other rookie of Focusado. But he does get around to Max into left field. So there is some um, constellation there for Focusados. Now he's going to do battle with Mitchell Carter. What is a place that Max thought about sending it in there into turn one in the cops? No, he will not get the position there from Focusado. Great defense there uh, by the O2. Now we have a look at what happened in the back of the initial start. A new notice contact with Sebastian Van Dalen, but uh, we're now focused on both Fuchs. Up there. Yep, there it is. Uh, the contact's there with Van Dalen. Um, I'm very surprised there wasn't a crash between those two, and they held it together, but uh, the stewards were definitely not uh, keen on that. He's driving there from Van Dalen. There's a yellow flag at the end of Sector 3, so we're going to have to investigate um, what happened back there in a minute. And this is, We're on lap 2 now. As Fabio Vitabasa loses position out there to uh, Rena Hirose after running wide off of Beckett's. Again, we mentioned that there's runoff in Maggots and Beckett's to mitigate uh, cars from running off and rejoining uh, in very dangerous positions. So now, uh, Vitabasa down to fifth, probably down to sixth now, uh, if Kei Takashi can get around him, but a great exit there by Vitabasa off of Stowe. Now, it's up to uh, Mitchell Carter to do battle with the number six. Mitchell Carter's had a pretty all right start to the year so far in car number 88. Uh, he was the pole sitter for the sprint race in Spain uh, in the last weekend, but uh, failed to score points uh, due to an accident with Scott Roush towards the very end of the sprint. Nevertheless, he did get around Takahashi with relative ease. 
Now we check out the incident of what happened here. This time it's Lula Lamona, uh, one of the other rookies here for GBT Reno Sport. And, well, this is what happened. Uh, she runs herself off the course and into the tire uh, into uh, Brooklyn's. So a very rough start there for Lula Lamona. She'll be uh, bringing down to pit road and will be uh, well off the pace for the remainder of the feature. Uh, that much is for certain. Here within the top 20, there is, or top 15, Hunter Fislovsky now doing battle with Rio Lucas and Max Kanani, which the latter uh, runs off course entering cups. And now Fislovsky is going to try to go for two for one in sector one. If he can get around uh, Lucas, the, the Englander who uh, elected to run under the Italian flag, so he could run for Grasicullo, as Fislovsky gets past uh, the 03 with relative ease. Of course, Wyslowski with a 5 3 penalty from uh, his antics from the sprint race last weekend. Scott Roush now on Bud Fuchs for what is effectively the top 20, which will allow him to be on the front row for the sprint race. This is exactly what Roush would need uh, to better his points advantage over several of his rivals. He's got 90 points right now, which sits him well in the top 20 in the standings, which looks fantastic. Oh, Nathan Orman is around. <laughs> Entering the. Uh, Entering Abbey, we'll have to check out what happened there. Or not Abbey, that was Club, excuse me. And Orman having lost it by himself. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, no damage, at least. <laughs> As the uh, team radio suggests. As his race engineer told him to keep going. So, of course, Nathan Orman's going to fall well within the 20s, probably in the 30s. Uh, so it'll be an uphill climb for him to get back in the point paying position for sure. Vita Bassa. Uh, in the 01 has expressed a lot of controversy in the media post-race. Well, it's not just him that expressed controversy uh, from the round of Spain. It was also Grossoculo himself. Um, having suggested that Roush and his team had done something illegal to his car to guarantee him the victory. Although, that was first thwarted by 2020 driver champion Jeffrey Finguy with a hilarious tweet from uh, considering that Italian Godzilla was incoming, which forced a retreat. Patrick Smith um, having a lot of trouble through Maggots and Beckett's. Now he's run well off course. He's lost the position there to Kei Takahashi and now to teammate Yuji the Max. And yeah, this has just been a problem all weekend long for every single driver. It's very difficult to be consistent here at this racetrack. And yeah, he's especially pushing it too hard into Beckett's. I, his race engineer is trying to calm him down to uh, mitigate him from causing any more drama. Um, anyways, Max Kanani now back on Hunter Vesovsky for the uh, top 15 position here. Although, it's going to be a bit of a tough call for Kanani to do. He's a he's a veteran in the series, but not a very well seasoned one, that's for sure, as he uh, came up from V8s a couple of years ago. Vesovsky trying to hold around the outside of, of Club now. It seems as though he might be able to maintain position from here. Kanani has been pretty quiet uh, in the Drivers' Championship standings. I think he's just outside the uh, top 20 in points, where he's getting completely blown out of the water by teammate Jeff Finguy, as you see back there. Um, here in around 17th, 18th place, if that. But uh, Veslovsky might be able to defend position. There's Tatiana Rosales, uh, for once having a solid run in her career. She's thinking about forcing it three wide through Priory and into left field, but thought better of it. But she will try to force a mistake out of Vyslovsky, so Kanadi will get the position, and it looks as though Rosales will also uh, get the track position from Vyslovsky as well. And she does, albeit they are side-by-side uh, -side entering uh, cops, but nevertheless, a pretty solid run for both drivers who have been pretty quiet so far. Meanwhile, Takahashi running herself a bit wide. This is going to be the battle for 6th or 7th place now as Demax Swift gets right, goes right by. Uh, no. That's a little bit higher up than I thought it would be. Anyway, Takahashi having a pretty splendid uh, rookie campaign so far. Nothing completely noteworthy so far of her performances, but she's sitting within the top 10 of the standings, and that's exactly what Newcom Motors anticipated of her uh, at the start of the season. Of course, the Rookie of the Year uh, campaign is going to be an uphill climb, especially with Scuderia Grosso Gulo uh, moving over to Ferrari, which their rookie driver, Vincenzo Focasato, is currently outperforming her in the standing. So, uh, yeah, this is for fifth place, actually. As to Max, 
trying to get around uh, Takahashi in the club. This is an ideal position to be. Uh, it's going to exit, and he will do so. But Takahashi now uh, down to sixth place uh, for the moment. But of course, she's she's definitely a fighter. She'll definitely get that position back when she's able to. Never, nevertheless, a good overtake there from the max. Battle for uh, 18th place now with Morales Souza Cardoso and Arturo Morales, which Morales has uh, had a pretty stern warning from Patronus Mercedes, especially with the uh, lack of performances in the first few races of the year. There could be a potential trade here in the future, but we'll have to see what becomes of that later if the Flash of 63 will remain uh, on their grid uh, for what's left of the season. Naomi Osakawa gets around uh, Cardoso as well, so Volkswagen Motorsport has not had a very good start to the year uh, themselves. Of course, there's Sean Angel and Scott Roush back there as well. Uh, to try to get that top 20 points paying position to um, be well uh, seated for the sprint race, but right now Cardoso is going to hold out for the time being. Patrick Smith now on Kei Takahashi as we are on lap 6 now. As it seems that Takahashi trying to do the same exact move to Max in the club in the lot prior. And will she do so successfully? Well, she might. But Smith actually gets a better exit this time. So this now he's side by side uh, with the rookie. Patrick Smith, of course, having won the sprint race uh, last weekend uh, under the safety car at Spain. After uh, overtaking fellow Canadian commoderate um, Sean Angel for Midnight United. Anyway, now it's Veslovsky on Rosales. Rosales outbreaks herself, entering Abby. So this is not a very good position for her to be in, and she will easily lose that position to car number 44. And of course, this is um, within the top 20 uh, in so far. Speaking of, battle for 20th uh, continues there between Karjosu and Osakawa. A pretty intense battle here for sure as we'll see where they come out of the frame. As the advantage goes to Cardoso, but it's a very intense battle, four horse fight for 20th place uh, with Sean Angel and Scott Roush as well. Uh, of course, Angel, I believe, having matched uh, Roush in the standings so far. Kiki Laukinen on lap seven, runs it up a bit wide. Okay, um, might want to get to see if he wants to keep the car in one piece. Meh. <laughs> Um, yeah, just let me know I know what to do. It's probably one of the last things you want to be told here. Problems for Sebastian Van Dalen as he enters Pit Road into lap 7 now, and there's a time penalty for Jude Harris, so I'm going to assume that she had some involvement uh, with car number 7. And we'll have to see what becomes of that, and... Hmm. Yeah, I, I feel for the rookie there, because Van Dalen's not had a very good start to uh, his year so far. And Diners Van Dalen in general, but we're going to have to see what happens. And, yep, that'll do it. I'm surprised Harris hasn't gotten a uh, Stewart's Inquiry by now, but uh, beat it as it may. Uh, that wasn't even a battle for a point fame position, so uh, I don't even know what you were thinking there. The battle for 20th seal continues on with... Cardoso under immense pressure from Naomi Osakawa. Osakawa's had some solid points runs for herself and intimidates Cardoso into cost, but that's going to allow Scott Roush to come right in because both cars have bogged their uh, exit speed uh, considerably. Now Roush, and oh my goodness, Cardoso is all over the place. He is losing his composure under pressure uh, for both Roush and Osakawa. They both managed to get by him. And Cardoso is in desperate need of a good uh, run this year, and he's just not found any as of late. So Cardoso, now sitting just outside points paying position, he's going to need to fight back if he wants to get those, point, get those points in a good starting position for the sprint. Veslowski, now under pressure from Kiki Lapinen, who uh, ran off course the lap a couple laps prior. And so... Uh, Veslovsky having a pretty strong start to the year, came out of the United States with a points lead, but hasn't really done much ever since. Veslovsky's had some solid top 10 finishes in most of the feature races uh, this year. However, as he gets by Lulu Mamona, 
He's not been very consistent with Patronus Mercedes, and Patronus Mercedes in particular has had a problem with having really good consistent finishes, unlike Scuderia Gossicullo uh, since the Route of Mexico. Of course, that's only just one race since, but be it as it may, Patronus Mercedes is not off to a great start this year, especially with someone like Arturo Morales holding the team back, and Laukinen uh, definitely not doing this up any favor um, with a bad entry in the club. As now we're in Serena Yen of lap 9, actually. Oh, wow, that's Horose being called for pit road for an undercut. Normally, you'd go about 10 to 11 laps on a strategy, but Horose and Takahashi are both coming in. So they're shooting for an undercut strategy at this time. And I'd like to believe a couple of others are coming in as well. Patrick Smith is employing the same strategy as both of them. Uh, several other cars have pit with them, so let's see what becomes of the, uh, the pit exit here. Carose off pit road. There's Donovan Cage. He's going to go for an overcut uh, for this stint. Not that it may matter for points anyway. Nothing completely out of the ordinary as of yet. Marco Costeca having a pretty solid run himself. And the same goes for uh, Max Canati. Uh, Scott Roush still within the top 20 points as well. All right, hold up. What is Nano 12? Is that a strategy call there uh, from K. Nagase, the uh, race engineer for... Oh, yes it is! We're coming into lap 11 now, and so that's Demax and, or not Demax, uh, Blake Warren and Vita Boss are coming up here. There's Demax back there, uh, my apologies, as well as uh, Focusado. So this is a pretty interesting strategy call there from Newcom Motors. Normally you wouldn't want to do an overcut uh, to expand your lead with very old tires, but it seems that K Nagase has something up her sleeve uh, when it comes to Yuki Tamura. Tamura, of course, having secure pole position, is now uh, entering this uh, feature race as a points leader. She was only a few couple points behind Yuji the Max, and that's and if this strategy call works, she could absolutely expand her championship lead. She is in her sophomore season uh, with Newcom Motors. She was a rookie last year when she was teammates with uh, defending champion Renan Rena Hirose. And of course, um, Yoshiko Sakamoto in the early parts of the season before she was KF this season. Oh, there's a yellow flag in Sector 1. Um, we're going to have to see what becomes of, of that. It, it seems like there might have been an incident off pit road. So we'll have to check that out in a minute. But as I said, um, Tamura's had some uh, strategies go pretty well for her, especially with the round of uh, the United States. She could be a multi uh, feature race winner here this year uh, if things go her way. As now she enters pit road entering lot 12. Uh, I guess that's what I understood by Nano 12. So we focus on Jeffrey Fink. I just what the instance about contact with him and Tatiana Rosales on exit. An unsafe exit there for Jeffrey Fink. Guy, they're still beating doors on the exit. Around goes Jeffrey Fingite, Rosales continues pushing him onto the racing surfaces. Oh boy, this is a very dangerous situation. Oh, luckily nobody hits him. Uh, on the exit of Copes there. And Veronica Ryan, watch out. Oof. Let's call it a run board for Rosales. Yeah, Fingite just came out at a really inopportune time. And I really don't know what both drivers are thinking. Yeah, that's a Stewart and Corey for both drivers, and rightfully so. But this is what really is the issue here with Rosales. She continues shoving the 92 on hit exit and uh, that was Kanasuki Moto on the end of the radio there with um, Rosales uh, that's in no way good news uh, for Rosales especially off hit road now Tamura is gonna jump and expand her race lead over Blink Warren and uh, who might be there in third? Oh, that's Rena Hirose. So her undercut strategy has worked wonders for car number one. She's managed to jump uh, Ina Bassa for the final podium position. So Hirose, of course, she's on now one lap over tires of Blake Warren. So it's going to be a little tough for her to uh, mount a charge in car number eight. But nevertheless, this is a very impressive showing there from Newcom Motors. Their strategy has paid off once again. Of course, Hirose, um, as mentioned earlier, is in an uphill battle to try to defend her driver's championship. She came into this race uh, 12th in the standings with a really bad run in Mexico and Spain uh, when she took herself out of the feature uh, with contact with Eugene the Max. And of course, climbed all the way back up to 13th 
from effectively last on the grid uh, in one of the most incredible drives I've ever seen out of Hirose since um, last year when she won multiple features in a row to secure the championship early. Of course, now things are different for um, Hirose as now she has to really fight tooth and nail uh, to get that driver's championship in her hands once again. She wants to become the first five time in the uh, new country car championship on, on the, uh, the grand stage of them all. And a fastest lap there for Blake Warren, 138.5. He is three tenths faster than um, Yugi Tamura. As now we look at um, little Lamona, let's see what's happened with her. As she gets sent by Vince Freeze, and around she goes um, into the stow, and that's not a good thing for Lamona. She's gonna try to get it out of the uh, sand trap. Nope, she's stuck. And that's going to be a safety car right there. Uh, and you really can't catch a break if you're a little Lamona. And Vince Freeze, I have no idea what you were doing there. I understand that 36 was much slower, but there was no way to punt her out of the way. And yeah, that's a stewarding glory there for Vince Freeze. He's had several um, false starts um, in the early stages of the year. And well, this certainly isn't going to help his case. So stewarding glory is, uh, is never good news if you're Vince Freeze in this case. Anyway, going to lap 17 now, as the field heads back to the green flag. It looks as though Tamura's gonna try to get a good jump on him, and she kind of does. Blake Warren got a good start as well, but it's Hirose that got a tumultuous start. Here comes Vita Vasa down the inside for third. Off course she goes, it's a cops now, and this is not good news for Hirose at all, as she's dropped down from third to fifth, maybe sixth place. And she's now in the middle of a three-ride situation with Vita Bossa and Takahashi, who is wanting to take advantage of this opportunity for herself. So now, it's Warren chasing down um, Yuki Tamura for the race lead, and effectively the race win. He's got a much better start now than car number two, as Hirose continuing to plummet down the order. Vita Bossa back there as well, and third, Warren needs a good exit off of club if he wants any shot at Tamura right now? No, he doesn't. Vita Basso, uh checked up a bit higher on the left-hand side uh, to try to challenge for uh, second place, but that uh, to no avail for the 0-1. Of course, the uh, round of Mexico having won the feature race uh, a couple rounds ago. But Tamura got a bit of a second win now. She's now starting to pull away from Blake Warren as uh, Bosi Markianovic, Veronica Ryan, and I think that was... Um, but Fuchs back there running wide, or that might have been Martin Vanderside. I couldn't quite tell in the background. Mark Yanovich is within the top 20 points in position. This would do very well for him if he's able to uh, pull this one off. Of course, he is the, uh, the first amputee in a series um, after having an, an accident in the World Rally Championship. But uh, he's making good wonders with car number four. He's, uh, uh, he's performing well above and beyond his expectations with Super Racing Team so far, and I wouldn't put it past me if he gets traded uh, for a better team here sooner than later. So great work there for Mark Yanovic, although he's going to fall to Scott Roush and uh, Naomi Osakawa. This is still top 20 points in position uh, up for grabs there for sure. Patrick Smith is not had a much better restart. Here's Kirk Vandenberg, who we haven't heard much from all day long. Of course, he was within the, the uh, top 10 for most of this race. Of course, Mitchell Carter back there as well. Pretty quiet in the top 10. As, um, also with Rio Lucas and uh, Hunter Veslovsky. Good run for Veslovsky, I will say. Uh, from that five grand penalties and make up for that. Uh, but Smith continuing to do battle with Vandenberg. Will Vandenberg prevail into Abbey? And... Maybe not, but he does have a good exit into the farm straight. Now let's see what happens in the bridge. No! Smith, with a better exit, is going to defend uh, position from there. Heading to two laps to go now. Hirose got through Eugene to Max for, um, for fifth place. Now he sets his sight. She sets her sights now on um, into Focusado for the uh, effect of fourth place. Excuse me there. Uh, it looks like she's also caught a second win. In fact, I think she said a 138-1 last time out. So Hirose really flying in car number one. 
Uh, despite the undercut uh, giving her a bit older tires, I guess that safety car really helped her out uh, to regain some rubber on those Bridgestone tires. As Hirose is going to continue to uh, chase down the O2, and maybe the O1 if she can secure the podium, but uh, you would be hard pressed to uh, have s to mount such a charge as that um, if you're car number one. Nevertheless, uh, she's got a good um, entry in the club, but we'll have to see what becomes of that battle later as she's still struggling to uh, mount any kind of overtaking position there on uh, Focusado. Not that much I'll say for, for right now. White heading to the white flag. Kanani and Roush have, do not have enough to finish this race. Same goes for Koseka and one of the Volkswagens back there. And that's a tough break for Max Kanani because he was well within position to have a decent points day today. Nevertheless, Hiroshi did get through Fukusada, but she is in no way going to get to a Vita Basso for third. And to the last third of the last lap now, Yugi Tamura scored the pole, led the most laps. This is going to be the first 70 of the season. Should she be able to hold it together for the last couple of corners? Into Brooklyn's now. Let's see if she gets masters the exit off of Fluffield. And she does, heading into wood, Woodcoat now. It's Yuki, it's a splendid day for Yuki. Tamura Nano 12 will work in her favor as she is a multi-time feature race winner here this year in a new Contouring Car Championship. A splendid race there for Blake Warren to secure the second position. His fantastic start kept him in second place for most of this race. Fabio Vitabasa will round out the podium. This is a good podium position for Vitabasa. I believe this is his second consecutive podium, um, or third, actually, with a first, second, and th now third. Hirose, with the fastest lap of the race, comes home fourth. Fokusato, fifth. Damax, Takahashi, Kirk Vandenberg, Patrick Smith, and Mitchell Carter will round out your top ten. Veslovsky, Lucas, Laukin, a great run for him. Morales, also a solid point save from him as well. Osakawa, Mark Yanovich, Bud Fuchs, Veronica Ryan. Wow, fantastic for her. Sean Angel and Nathan Ormond will round out your top 20. Your front row now will be Nathan Ormond and Sean Angel. So Ormond is in a very good position to uh, see if he can secure his first sprint win uh, here at a new contouring car championship. Let's head down to the grid for the 13 lap sprint race. Here we go, it's Nathan Orman now, leading the front row. Uh, with Sean Angel, it's a bad start for Orman, and it's a great start for Veronica Ryan. She heads all the way up the outside, entering hopes it's a bad corner for Ryan. She runs wide in the grass, and now she's gonna lose all sorts of track position. Off the exit of turn one, and just like that, her points run is effectively done. And yeah, I'd be upset too if I was the race engineer for TRT there. But Orman now down to fourth place as Bud Fuchs and Bolsi Markianovich are going to do battle for the race lead. Down the hangar straight. And they're side by side, entering Stowe. Let's see who gets the uh, better advantage off of Stowe, but it looks like it's going to be Fuchs for the time being. However, if you're entering, if you're entering club right now, I consider the uh, outside line to be the preferred line. And that's what Markianovich intends on doing. Around the outside goes car number four. Is he going to be able to secure the position? Heading into Abby, we'll have to see. And yes, he does. What a great pass there from Bosi Markianovich. Bosi Marky, as many like to call him in the paddock with his uh, very long last name. Sean Angel now up to third, the master of sprint races uh, for Midnight United Racing. A good start for car number 42 as well. Um, Naomi Osakawa back there in fourth place with Orman uh, trying to gain some of the track position back. But what a fantastic start there for Marky here in car number four. He could be very well be on his way to get his first sprint race win, and that would be a good story for a super racing team, especially. Yeah, unbelievable for him. Uh, and here's Vincenzo Focasato, who's running in sixth place from 16th. He's picked up 10 positions in one singular lap. Now in lap two, Focusato is looking to change his competition down and maybe secure his first uh, sprint race win of his rookie campaign. And that'll definitely help his rookie of the year 
our campaign as well in a fight against Nathan Norman and uh, Kei Takahashi. Uh, speaking of Norman, he's might do battle with him for, uh, for fifth place. Norman, really having lost his composure from the initial start. Fokusato downing inside now, in, off the exit of the bluff field, and he's gonna get that position with relative ease. So Fokusato, now within the top five, I would definitely be watching out for the O2 if I was everyone else. Um, especially if you're uh, a Kawa. In fact, most of his top five are um, full of rookies. Well, uh, I believe three of the top five are rookies. Orman now having a better exit off of Copes is going to try to do battle Fokusato into Magus and Beckett to take back the fifth position. Uh, Kiki Lakanen sitting back there in seventh. See if he wants to take any advantage of this opportunity. But Fokusato actually getting a better exit um, off the chapel curb. And now he's secured a fifth position for the time being. But Fuchs, having lost touch with Markianovic, is trying to defend as best he can from Sean Angel for second place. So Sakawa having um, compromised her run into club. And now it's up to Bud Fuchs to defend a position with Sean Angel. Sean Angel is a multi time feature and sprint race winner when he was a Fink Guys tell me when they were with Ferrari uh, several years ago up to last year. And Angel trying to work up on Midnight United. He gets around Fuchs with relative much ease. Wow. Call me impressed uh, by Sean Angel's driving. Well, the car is underdeveloped as Midnight United is supposed, supposedly supposed to be an R&D here for that team. Angel had a fantastic run around the uh, 78, who's now starting to fall into the clutches for third uh, with Naomi Osakawa. And here's Vincenzo Focusato, as we mentioned in the lap prior, heading into lap four. Focusato now with a battle for third uh, here in this sprint race. And a great pass there for Focusato. He's going to chase down car number 19, uh, one of the other rookies uh, in her campaign as well. And lap four, paling into the wall. That was Kasteka that sent her into the, the barrier off of Abby. And yeah, that's definitely going to be a safety car. There's no getting that car uh, moving again. And yeah, I really don't know what that was about with Kosteka. And I wouldn't put it past me if there was a 10 second penalty. Um, there's Nate. Yeah, there it is. Anyway, Sean Angel, um, having seen that Focusado dispatched um, the 19 for third, he's going to try to hold Focusado off for second. And he does successfully as they take the safety car. But he's got a lot of work ahead of him if he wants to continue that defense. Heading to the restart. Lap 6 into lap 7 now for uh, Mark Yanovich. He has a fantastic restart, a poor restart for Sean Angel, a great restart for Norman. He's down the inside of Osakawa, entering turn number 1. But it looks like Angel is going to hold on to um, the second position. For now, we don't see. Oh, nope, there's Hokusato right now. He's going in. Second place into Magnuson Beckett's now, and Mark Yanovich has definitely got to be sweating full of seeing the uh, a red Ferrari in his mirror as we speak. A poor exit off of Beckett's now, it's gonna allow Focusato uh, to mount a charge. Mark Yanovich, he's gonna have to defend as best he can down the hangar straight into Stowe, and he's gonna outbreak Focusato in the Stowe. Let's see what he does in the veil if he gets a better exit, and he does. Mark Yanovich does have the preferred line on um, Focusato. We're going to see what happens in club. Is Focusato going to get the better exit? No, he compromises his exit. Overdrives the uh, middle of club, and now it's going to allow Nathan Orman right back into third place to try to do battle Focusato for second, but to no avail. Focusato with a better straight line. Well, he's going to hold on to second for now. And then it's just absolute pandemonium. Uh, here throughout the top 10. Angel is hemorrhaging trap position right now. I think that restart was a sign of an ill moment uh, for car 42. He might be down on power. We're not quite sure. But Sean Angel, nevertheless, a fantastic run for car 42. He's trying to hold off Rio Lucas there. But what is now um, set sixth place? But Fukusato has his sights now on Mark Yanovich for a race lead. Rio Lucas on Naomi Osakawa for what is effectively fifth place. And he's got the uh, preferred line entering Culp's right now, and he gets that position with ease. So Rio Lucas also having a very solid performance. He's been pretty quiet in the Drivers' Championship in so far, but um, let's not count him out of the Drivers' Championship just yet. Meanwhile, 
Elsakawa under immense pressure from Sean Angel, and um, Bud Fuchs, and there's Hunter. I believe that's Hunter Veslovsky. I'm not sure who that is. Yes, it is. Evolution Demax there, four wide off of Beckett's now. Contact in the back, that looks like that was Vita Bossa and Kirk Vandenberg, yellow flag. Uh, headed towards the end of Sector 1, there's um, there's a 63 of Morales off, and I believe that's Vandenberg off as well. Let's see what happened here, there was contact between the 01 and 98, and around he goes. Uh, so Kirk Vandenberg is definitely not going to uh, be scoring any uh, points after this sprint race for sure. And on board with Morales, I, I really can't tell. Oh! That was fast. So, they decided to not take any action. It, I mean, to be fair, Vandenberg should have been rewarded the time penalty for the avoidable contact, but um, my rationale with the stewards is probably they, that was uh, the karma that he deserved anyway. Nevertheless, um, Bud Foose is continuing to lose track position now. He's trying to defend from Osakawa for what is now... Uh, Seven places. Oh, whoa! Well, wow, Hirose there. Contact with uh, Kiki Laukinen. That was that was almost an ugly wreck off of Woodco for uh, Hirose. But Hirose now going to go for a two for one on Bud Fuchs. We're going to have to look at that again. Because that was a little dangerous there from Hirose. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay. And right in front of uh, Vita Bossa as well. And... I'm not terribly surprised with the warning there for the stewards. As wow, Lockin is all over the place again. Oh, that wasn't. Oh, that's not Nagase. That was Kira Hirose. That was her dad uh, telling him to knock it off. Hmm. I uh, yeah, I'd listen to my dad if I were you there, Reno. It's lap nine now. There's Focusado on Markianovich. But a race lead, and he's gonna get it with relative ease. Great pass there by Vincenzo Focusato, and he is running away with this. Oh, uh, this will be a fantastic points day or points weekend there for Vincenzo Focusato. 75 points is massive um, in the New Cup Touring Car Championship, that's for sure. If he, uh, he's no longer be able to get uh, most lap sled as Markianovic has that secured for sure, and Markianovic currently has the fastest lap on the racetrack. Ria Lucas now on. Patrick Smith for fourth place. So Scudier Gostakulo overall has had a pretty solid uh, weekend themselves. They're looking to take their fight with the new confident team uh, championship, that's for sure. But not that it seems as uh, relevant as a driver's championship as at present. Uh, looks like Lucas is not going to be able to uh, nab Patrick Smith for fourth, but he's going to uh, hold out in fifth for the time being. Wow. Osakawa now doing battle with Mitchell Carter. Mitchell Carter having compromised his race line. I believe this is uh, fighting for the top 15, I thought, within the top 15. So, Osakawa not running much better in the latter half of the sprint, but he, she's doing her best to uh, secure some points after her teammate, uh, Veronica Ryan, having blundered um, off turn one. As Carter blocks off Hirose, uh, Hirose's in pretty good uh, position to score some points for herself. Uh, to take that championship fight right back to her teammate, uh, uh, Yuki Tamura. Speaking of, uh, Hirose in the lap 10 now. Whoa, watch out there. Ooh. Uh, I don't even know if that was Vita Bossa trying to uh, scare her, but it certainly has. Answering cops now. And, oh, that's a bad exit there for um, Osakawa. That's going to allow Vita Bossa to go through. And that might allow Tamura to go through on Hirose. That's not what... Uh, Hirose needs at the moment. But now it's Hirose getting a better exit off. Back it's now going to try to chase down Osakawa for position. She's lost one position to uh, one of her points rivals so far. She really doesn't need to lose any more uh, to any more uh, of her championship adversaries at the moment. But now Hirose continuing to chase down uh, car number 19. Again, this is within the top 15. Uh, points are being paid in the sprint race, albeit not as many. Compromise entry there for Osakawa. Is she going to try to shoot for a better exit? And Hirose, you'd be hard pressed to if you're fighting against a four time driver's champion. Uh, side by side now. In, um, down the straightaway and into Abby. Let's see if Hirose can secure the position. Osakawa brings herself. Nope, no chance. Hirose gets a position um, on the exit of Abby with relative ease. And now Hirose sets her sights on Fabio Vitabasa. 
uh, for trap position as well. Coming to uh, two laps to go now. It's Eugene to Max and Hunter Vasilevsky. Ooh, that was almost bad off of Love Field. That could have been an ugly crash uh, for Vasilevsky, especially. And yeah, Stewart's didn't like that out of to Max. Uh, that's for sure. And I wonder what the uh, Vasilevsky's reaction to it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I'm not entirely against the uh, the notion there from uh, Veslovsky. That was for sure, because that was a bit idiotic there from the Max, since he knows better than to do that. Anyways, Mitchell Carter now doing battle with Sean Angel. What is effectively a 7th or 8th place on track. I can't quite tell. Back here, it looks like it. Angel trying to defend from Carter. He does successfully around the outside of club, but... You gotta remember, Mitchell Carter has the straight line speed advantage against uh, Sean Angel, so uh, Angel's gonna have to watch for an attack there from Mitchell Carter. And like I said, Carter's had a pretty quiet start to the year. Um, but GMT and USA, I believe they can be higher into the championship standings if uh, they put a bit more effort into their uh, program, in their driver program. Of course, Nathan Norman having the most points out of the, uh, three, the trio so far uh, in the driver's championship. It's strange to see a rookie up performing the uh, two uh, seasoned veterans right there, that's for sure. Anyways, heading to the white flag now, it is Vincenzo Focasato. Stay. Since he's taken the lead from Bosa Markianovic, he has since not looked back. The rookie sensation hoping to cement himself as a not only a rookie of the year threat, but a very serious driver's championship threat. In the early start of the season, we didn't expect Focasato to have any threat for the championship at all much less Rookie of the Year, but ever since they switched to Ferrari, a different switch has been turned on for Vincenzo Focasato. Down the hangar straight now for the last time. Focasato has a massive lead over Mark Ivanovic, and he has had the better long run pace here in the sprint. But now, through Stowe on the veil, Focasato must be flawless in his last lap to secure his first sprint race win of the year. Uh, he had a podium in Canada when he finished second to uh, Jeffrey Finn guy. So this should be a sign of things to come there for a young rookie. He was a Formula Beta uh, driver, a very well-seasoned Formula Beta driver at that, but nobody could find him uh, for Formula Alpha, so he switched over to touring cars. Focusado looking to have made the right move into the final sector now through Priory. Uh, Brooklyn's... Uh, of course, he ran off at Priory um, in the first lap of the feature race, so it seems that he's learned his lessons since then. Off of Bluff Field now, it is Vincenzo Focasato's day. Here to Newcomb Touring Car Championship, Focasato off of Foucault to secure his first sprint race win of the year. Fantastic run there by Vincenzo Focasato. Markianovic, of course, having more points than Focasato after securing the fastest lap and most laps led here in the sprint race. Nathan Norman recovers to third place after a terrible start in the sprint. Rio Lucas and Eugene Max will round at your top five. He did a Mexican round, Hunter Vyslovsky. Patrick Smith uh, will finish in sixth, Vyslovsky seventh, Angel in eighth. Very solid run for the well seasoned Canadian for Midnight United. Fabio Vitabasa rounds up in ninth with 10 points. Mitchell Carter comes home 10th. Yuki Tamura managed to get by teammate Rena Hirose to secure a couple more points on uh, her teammate. Hirose will finish in 12th. Naomi Osakawa drops to 13th, but it's still a point stay, nevertheless, for Naomi Osakawa. The young Japanese talent, we, we hope to see more out of her in the future. We hope that TRD will improve uh, their season as well. That would also help. Max Kanani, a great race for him. He comes in home in 14th place. He started 26th place in the sprint, but a point stay is a point stay all the same for Max Kanati. Kei Takahashi is the last points finisher here in 15th place. This will help her rookie campaign a little bit, but she is up for a tough challenge from Vincenzo Focasato, uh, who's won the uh, feature rate or the sprint race here today. Excuse me. Nevertheless, it is been a splendid weekend here for the Newcom Touring Car Championship. We'll have to see what the uh, championship standings has in store for us. As now, we look to the uh, Drivers' Championship, 
exiting the round of Great Britain. Yuki Tamura has expanded her points lead over Yushin to Max by 22 points. It doesn't sound like much, but it can be a lot if uh, Tamura continues this cons level of consistency. Fabio Fidavasa climbs up to third in the championship. He is now becoming a threat for the Drivers' Championship as we speak. Teammate Vincenzo Focasato and Rian Lucas, 3-4-5. I would seriously consider those three to be a championship threat here in the future. Patrick Smith falls to sixth, although he's having a pretty solid championship campaign himself. Kei Takahashi in seventh. Hunter Veslovsky in eighth. Nathan Orman drops to ninth. Rena Hirose claws up two position uh, for tenth, but she's still got an uphill battle if she wants to have any shot at the championship against her uh, teammate or anyone else in the top ten. Blake Warren and Mitchell Carter, 11 and 12, one point apart. Mar Bosey Mark Yardovich, a fantastic 13th place run for him in the championship so far. Finn Guy has fallen to 14th after a no points weekend. Um, uh, we'll have to see what comes of that Stuart St. Corey later. Kirk Vandenberg and Arturo Morales are tied for 15th place. Sean Angel and Scott Rauch, of course, Rauch having not scored this weekend, still a very solid points uh, position for the rookie. Tatiana Rosales um, in 19th, but well low, below where she needs to be in the Drivers' Championship. And Kiki Laukinen is going to round out your top 20 at, coming up after the first third of the New Comp Touring Car Championship. Next time we see the New Comp Touring Car Championship will be in the round of Germany, here at the Norris Ring, streets of Norris Ring. Until then, we'll see you next time.